This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, ladies and gentlemen. And right before I get into the main part of the show, if you hear small children, that is because it is summer vacation and there are small children around and I've, you know, the show must still go on. So if you hear small children in the background, I apologize in advance. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. My co-hosts, as always, are Holly Christine and Gonzo Link. I'm sorry, I'm Zombie Holly. <laughs> yes, you're <sure>, Zombie Holly. <laughs> because I guess I am sort of too. I just like woke up about what was it thirty minutes ago? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's been one of those days <laughs> for us because because it's like you know Gonzo <laughs> is in Alaska and he's a couple of hours behind us, anyways. Holly, you've been you've been working like hell on a website. Yeah, yeah, it's a grocery store, guys. Yeah. You ever try to write about a grocery store? <laughs> you sell food that so, you're going to eat, hopefully, if you're not wasteful. Yeah. Uh, Here's and, a list and, of food you might want. Right. We have it all. Food items that you might purchase from our store. You know what? That makes me wonder if my local Piggly Wiggly has a website. It probably does. Because I think they do have that feature where you can, like, order stuff online and they can deliver it to you. Mm-hmm. I think. But it, it's been a while and I don't really feel like looking it up because I've got a few tabs open already for what we're going to be talking about this week. And and usually before the show, we take a few minutes to just look through this whole list of links that I keep up and refresh and gather and everything. And something I don't think we've talked about – if we've talked about it, it hasn't been on this show, and if it has, it's been a while – but we also have Gonzo, and we can get his thoughts on it if we have. And that is Purity Balls. Uh, oh. We can thank Holly for this one. Yep. Yes. <laughs> I just saw a common thread in the list of stories to discuss this week, and I was like, this is it, right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because uh, cause th- this all ties into this whole idea of virginity and and the Madonna whore complexes and everything like that. You want to know what part of the problem is? Is these fucking purity balls? I and really thought that these were satire when I first heard of them. I mean, I, I heard <laughs> them a while only. ago, and I was just like, "This has to be something that like the Onion cooked up, or like that Daily Current was spread around, or something. Some satire site like made made up and then passed around, and people just latched onto it because the internet is like that." But no, this is apparently a very real thing, and I want to go die now. <laughs> yeah, so the gist yeah. of it, for those of you who don't know what a purity ball is, mm-hmm. is these, um, you know, teenage... Uh, some of these girls are actually quite young and are most certainly not teenagers. Um, I, From the list we're looking at, I'd put them around... Uh, Let's see. There's... The youngest at about five. Yeah, I'm looking at it, it's like, why would you take? Why would you have a purity ball for a five year old? Yeah, and then you know, somewhere around, I would say, fourteen. Yeah, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. And um, there's essentially a ceremony, and usually this happens in in big groups. It's not one girl at a time. Um, essentially. She marries her father um, as a promise to um, be pure until marriage. Yeah, because that works out so well. So they wear wedding dresses, and uh, there's a ceremony and a reception, and they say, Daddy, my body belongs to you until it belongs to some other man. Now, now, is that the exact words they use? Because <laughs> that, that, that just makes it... God, not. That, but that it's, just... it's, honestly, I'm probably not hyperbolizing the situation very much. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, that's more or less how it is. It's like, yeah. okay, Dad, uh, my virginity is yours until, I guess, you decide that this guy is right for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and of course, if you fall in love with a guy that your dad doesn't approve of, well, sad day for you, unfortunately. And I, I that's the kind of... That's the kind of culture we need to get away from. Women are, are their own thing. They're their own people, their own bodies, their own entities. You know, they yeah, should it's have like we claim control. To, we, 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 it's like, like, oh yeah, we hate the Taliban so much. We hate those you know terrorists who like to control women. So let's do our own version of something like that, I guess, by just having 
having our daughters pledge their virginity to us so right. that well, their you know, lives are more under our control. I mean, one, it's totally different because we're, well, I say we, but I can't include myself in this group because uh, we're white. Um, <laughs> we're white or white Christian Americans. Yeah, right. right. So, you know, this is, you know, while they're doing it through their religion and that's a bad thing, we're doing it through our religion and that's a good thing. Yeah, the 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 the, the smell. Uh, oh God, that does smell of hypocrisy there, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Oh my. It does yeah. Just just slightly, just a little bit. But uh, the the article that that was given, well, actually brought to us by Holly, is from the Huffington Post. Uh, I think this one this one was actually posted uh, last month. It's about a month ago that this particular article was posted. And it all the title is Welcome to the Bizarre and Beautiful World of Purity Balls. Oh goody. Mm. And, and there are pictures and I will have pictures going up on the video version if you're watching the video version. Um for those unfamiliar with the ritual, a purity ball is a religious ceremony in which fathers and daughters dress up in ball gown attire, spend a night of dinner and dancing together, and end the evening with a vow to abstain from sex until marriage. Yeah, because abstaining from sex until marriage works so well if that's all you know. Right. Mm. Oh, yeah. uh, it, it, uh, God, I just, I, I just feel so bad for for, kid, for kids who don't get you know comprehensive sex education. I mean, you know, I I grew up in Alaska, which is kind of a red state, and yeah, when I when I got around to sex education in ninth grade, I mean, I I'd also had some sex education earlier than that. Oh, but I was going to say ninth grade. I was like, we covered it in the fifth grade. <laughs> no, I, I, before I, that, I, we had like the separate boys' conversation and girls' conversation. Oh yeah, no, we had that in fourth grade. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I'm just saying, like in ninth grade, like when we got around to it again, uh, yeah, we're not that backwards. Don't worry. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> um, like, I'm from Iowa, and I'm uh, really uh, Alaska. <laughs> Um, but no, so, uh, we got around to it. I mean, they did, all, you know, the focus on like, you know, here are the pictures of, you know, genital warts and, and shit, but you know, yeah, we my, had that. So, my school didn't do that. I don't think. Oh yeah, God. Yeah. But they also, you know, they, they touched on sex education and, you know, various forms of contraception. Like they had condoms, they had, uh, you know, a uh, not condoms <laughs> and, <laughs> And they also just sort of touched on abstinence, too. They said, like, so abstinence is when you just don't have sex at all. And it really is, like, the only surefire way to never get pregnant or transmit a disease. But in case you do decide to have sex, here are the other things you can do to prevent pregnancy or infection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and there's the... your abstinence education. Yeah. <laughs> but, the, but, of course, the whole abstinence only, abstinence only, of course, we see that it doesn't work. And And you know what? I'm finding it interesting. You two were talking about when you guys learned your, you know, got your sex education, whatever. I don't remember when I initially learned it, but I remember at least when I moved to Florida. I moved to Florida when I was in the seventh grade, and that year they had like the first, well, at least my first in terms of coming to Florida schools wave of the whole sex sex education thing. And I remember the lady asking around class, okay, what is the best way to prevent birth, con- you know, prevent you know pregnancy or what have you? And I'm sitting here thinking, okay, in terms of you know, having sex, what is the best way? Right. It didn't think, it didn't occur to me that, that, you know, you know, no sex or whatever, or at least not at that point it did. Cause I'm assuming, okay, you know, this is under the assumption people are having sex. So I said condoms. So I went in there with a little foreknowledge. I don't know how, especially since the most, probably the previous times I could have even had it were either in Texas or in Wyoming. So I don't remember how I learned it, but I learned it. <laughs> and really? then, yeah. Well, I didn't even watch MTV very often. Oh, okay. Might have picked it up from porn. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't watch so MTV, you were watching a lot goes. of porn in the seventh grade. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Hey, I, hey, hey, hey. I, I, I used to sneak my dad's stuff every now and then, and I would, I would see the thing, so. <laughs> That's some weird dude rite of passage, I think. Yeah. <laughs> It is. Although, although my kids, when I finally have kids, they don't have to worry about that. I'm just gonna say, okay, yo, oh, wait, wait, wait. You're interested? Okay, here, look, pick one out, watch it, keep it here, <laughs> do what you will. Just don't let me see it. I would rather not see it. Do it in the yeah. privacy of your bedroom. Ugh. That's all I ask. 
Oh, so yeah. As the photographer David Magnuson, Magnuson, Mag- Magnuson, Magnuson, I can yeah. read, explains in Purity, a photography book on the subject. The girls make a pledge to remain pure and live pure lives before God, to stay sexually abstinent, abstinent <laughs> until marriage. Their father signed a commitment undertaking to protect their daughter's purity, with a shotgun probably, at least in the South. <laughs> You trying to touch my daughter? I'm, I'm surprised there are no shotguns in any of these photos, to be honest. I know. <laughs> so we've got the first one here, and while I while I pull that up here and, and get that all ready, I take take a look at this and tell me that th- this probably isn't the creepiest one I've seen, but it still looks kind of creepy. Oh, they get worse. They get, yeah, they get yeah. worse as you scroll down. I mean, I thought this one was bad, but Jesus. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like, okay, you know, you, you love your daughter, that's fine, but the face you're making, it makes it look like you're, 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 you're I don't even want to go there. Um, <laughs> it makes it look like you're hiding something. Yeah, and not in the good way. No, not in a good way at all. Yeah. So the article goes on to say, Magnuson has been fascinated with by this traditional rite. So much so that he embarked on his photo- photographic endeavor to document fathers and daughters who together take the vow. Of course, there's a lot to take issue with regarding the concepts that govern a purity ball. As flavor-wise as Tom Hawking put it, it's hard to know where to start with this. The notion of sex as impurity, the fact that it's all daughters and no sons, the idea of dressing a preteen girl in something that looks awfully like a wedding dress. Yeah, that, that is another thing about these purity balls. You don't see these for boys. You only see these for girls. Yeah, because sex with girls is sinful, except, you know, it's it's even more sinful if it's not with a girl. Yeah, because sex is sinful, even though it's enjoyable. Because, mm-hmm. oh my god. Uh, and, the, and the whole wedding and the whole wedding dress motif. You, you'll, you guys will see this on the video version a lot more. It's, it's just, really? Do we really need to have, you know, wedding dresses or whatever? It's not like... They're, they're things or what have you. Not things. But, yeah, they're, they're not in a wedding. It, it's just, just, ah. Uh. Yeah, and there is actually some video footage of this particular purity ball. And God. there's, like, a dance routine, and they're all wearing white dresses. So in these photos, you're going to see some girls who are wearing not white dresses. Yeah. That's just for the photos. They actually had to put on a white dress for the event. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When we teach girls that their virginity makes them special and valuable, we're sending the simultaneous message that without their virginity, they are tainted and damaged. The Guardian's Jessica Val- Valenti. Valenti? Rowe. Valenti. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Which, I can already tell you that's not true. No no girl, no, no female that I have been around, whether sexually or non-sexually, that is not a virgin – is not tainted and not damaged. At least, if they are damaged, it's not because they're not a virgin. You know, they may have their own mental problems or whatever from whatever outside sources, but it's not because they are simply not a virgin. Uh, it's just, I just can't stand how big of a taboo uh, that people make sex out to be. I mean, it is a pretty you know intimate act and something that's you know should be very special, but just the fact that it's now being regarded as this thing that if you do it without doing this sacred tradition of, you know, joining up with this other person that you care about, or apparently your father has decided that he cares about, then how don't? No. Don't even think. And if you think, then you need to purge yourself right now. Yeah, and sad to say, I used to think similarly in high school, even though, you know, still had the similarly similar hormones running through and everything. It, it was it was pretty bad, because, see, I, I can tell you how bad that mindset will affect guys, because I'm, I'm on record saying that, you know, yeah, I, I grew up and watched porn as I was growing up, would sneak it from my dad's room or what have you. And when I finally got access to the internet, I started printing them out and... and doing you know doing things with them that way and then i would get some kind of wild hair up my ass or or feel tremendous guilt and whatever i happen to have on hand you know usually like the printed pictures or whatever 
I, I would feel so guilty, and then I would just throw them away because it was it, uh, because of the whole oh you should feel guilty for enjoying this yada 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 because God 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 so mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly go over yeah so so it does affect on both ends obviously you know what we're talking about here affects the females a lot a lot more and a lot harder than it does the males but you know it it just it goes to show that it does go both ways mm-hmm. well, so and you made a really good point too about how none of these purity balls are done with boys it's all girls and again it's this it, it it's it's sending this like double message or the you know, or a double speak message or whatever you want to call it that says, you know, sex, you know, sex for girls is sinful and wrong and needs to wait until marriage, but sex with, you know, sex for boys, I mean, hey, boys will be boys, right? I yeah. mean, oh, I guess... I, I it, and that's thinking... exactly how it feels from a girl's point of view, too. It's like... Mm-hmm. It, it, and we talked about this on an earlier episode, how it's very much encouraged. Guys, go out and lose your virginity. Fuck as many women as you can. Yeah. And for women, it's like, no... Uh uh-uh. uh, no. You you shouldn't do anything with a guy until you're ready to commit. Yeah, which right. th- which then leads to the whole thing. Wait, if guys are supposed to get laid and they're only supposed to get laid with women, but if women actually accept and let the guys fuck them, then they're sluts and whores and and you know wouldn't be worth walking on at, even if you salt the ground they walk on or whatever. I, I don't know where I'm going with that analogy, but it's a pretty bad one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, you try. It's just the, the 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 idea that it's like you know okay guys you know yeah go out have sex you know be men and girls no 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 don't 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 do that don't you need to stay inside and you know protect yourselves from the the pre- there there are men out there who want to have sex with you and it's yeah. like well where did that come from right because you know women don't like sex at all oh, we're oh. just totally against that and oh, stuff. Yeah. Let's not, you know, really? let's not set up that, you know, that idea in the minds of the, you know, of our young, you know, of our young people, and then just, you know, create this massive sense of entitlement among, me, you know, men who are, then have, you know, practically no one to, to do it with, because all the, uh, all the girls are so like, well, but sex is a bad thing, right? And you're, you're bad for wanting sex. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that it's, you know, necessarily a, a you know, the right thing to be like, I'm going to go out and fuck as many women as I want. Because it's not, you know, you shouldn't have that mentality. But when you create that mentality in guys and then make it sex for, for, for girls, just like, no, I can't. I, I, I need to, I, I need to, whatever. I don't really know where I'm going with that. But I, I, I hope you guys do what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah. It's basically, guy, you know, the whole guy, the whole fact that guys should go fuck as many women as they want. And any women they fuck are automatically whores. Not a good, not a good thing, you know. And I, yeah. I am of the belief that if you want to go out and fuck your way all around the world, go ahead and do so. It's not a sin. It is not a horrible thing to have all the sex you want. Just do it safely. Do it responsibly, and and there you go. But if you don't do it safely and responsibly, well, then you're just going to have to deal with the consequences, just like anything else. That's yeah. that's all there is to it. Oh, uh, so yet according to Mag. Magnuson, the more he learned about the culture of the balls, the more he warmed up to the idea, uh uh-oh, realizing some of his initial judgments were overly critical. When I first heard about the purity balls, I I imagined angry American fathers terrified of anything that might hurt their daughters or their honor, Magnuson explained to the Huffington Post. But as I learned more, I understood that the fathers, like all parents, simply wanted to protect the ones that they love in the best way they know how, which apparently doesn't involve a shotgun yet. It was also often the girls themselves that had taken the initiative to attend the balls. They had made their decisions out of their own conviction and faith, in many cases with fathers who didn't know what a purity ball was before being invited by their daughters. I do not believe that this, for a this second. This just pisses me off because this is such bullshit. You, you know what a five-year-old girl is thinking in a situation like this? Oh, I get to wear a pretty dress. Oh, I get to dance. I get to have a party. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not... not- she doesn't give two shits about whether she's a virgin or not. She doesn't, she probably doesn't even know about sex. No, no yeah, and if you're of the, the if you're of the family that's 
or if you're part of a family that's you know would do this kind of thing, something tells me you're probably not getting a very comprehensive sex education in general. Yeah. So right. Oh. No, I don't believe that at all. I, I do not believe that these girls were like, oh, I need to protect my virginity. My daddy's the only one who will ever be able to do that until he finds me the right man. Yeah, um, and with some of these pictures, some of which, oh, I don't even, some of these pictures make me question even if their dad is, is a good idea to protect their virginity. Uh, that really makes me question that. That's really a scary thing. <laughs> Huh. There's actually uh, video footage um, somewhere on the internet, and I wish I had known which article it was so I could have pulled that one. But there, it's like, you know, this dad walks up behind his daughter while she's sitting at a table, and he puts his arm around her, and he rests his cheek on top of her head. And it's like, oh, that's that's an inappropriate move on your daughter, okay? Yeah, yeah. You- you might have gone through the ceremony, but you did not actually just marry her. Yeah. You know, it, she might you know, be your daughter, but... Uh, oh. I come from a family where it's just family culture that you kiss other people on the lips. Yeah. And you kiss anyone on the lips. It doesn't matter who it is, who you, how you're related to them. That's just what you do. Right. Um, right. You know, so that part didn't weird me out, but, you know... He, even knowing that, there's still certain physical boundaries that, you know, I I see in these fathers and daughters that I'm like, no, that's that's just wrong. So I want you guys to all just process that in your head. I come from a family culture where we kiss each other on the lips. However, <laughs> what I'm seeing in purity balls is way fucking creepier than kissing somebody on the lips. Oh. Yeah. Oh, and 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 uh, Magnuson is, you know, he's using the balls as a lens through which to examine how our culture and upbringing shape our ideals. Uh, coming with the second picture should be showing up right about now. I have to wonder what is. I don't know what he's thinking. I I, I very much question what the daughter is, is going she on in her. A little pissed. Yeah. You know. Hopefully, it's just. I'm really hoping that that it's just like, oh my god, you made me come out here in this dress, I'm going to kick your ass. But this is actually, in in my opinion, the least creepy picture. Yeah, definitely. There's there's no weird touching, there's, you know... He doesn't have a creepy look on his face. You know, he he has... I don't know. Not not, not as bad as some of the others, but... Yeah, Yeah, no... Yeah, oh god. And so Magnuson reached out to organizers of different purity balls in the U.S. and, over the course of around five months, contacted a variety of father-daughter duos willing to pose for portraits. Mostly teenage girls, the daughters on formal gowns and pose with their father and figures in a loving embrace. Loving embrace, oh dear. The resulting images are striking, to be sure, no shit, marked by unusually serious expressions and overly dramatic poses. Uh, yeah. You, you guys are going to see it. But Magnuson's portraits refuse to pass judgment, allowing an image to simultaneously ring beautiful to one viewer and offensive to another. Uh, well, I wanted to create portraits so beautiful that the girls and their fathers could be proud of the pictures in the same way they are proud of their decisions, while someone from a different background might see an entirely different story in the very same photographs, the artist explained. We'd say Magnuson certainly succeeded, crafting images that, whether or not you approve of them, will stay emblazoned in your memory for quite a while. And we're going to show you some more now. <laughs> yeah. uh, like like the next one here. Oh, yeah. There it is. Uh, where we see the father and the daughter, and it's like she's just kind of falling asleep. That one, I don't know how creepy that looks. It looks yeah, like... Yeah, no, I mean the hand-holding's a little weird, but otherwise it's not creepy at all. yeah. That one's not too bad, because it's just like, oh, she's just asleep. She's just sleepy. Okay. You know, and then that's fine. Or or what have you. That, that's not so bad. The next one, I, I, yeah. How old do you think these kids look? Uh, too young. Far, yeah. far too young to be ever involved in anything like this. I'm, I'm going to go seven and five, maybe eight and five. Maybe, yeah, but... Uh... Yeah, it, it's just... Uh, like, like we were saying earlier, they... they don't understand they don't comprehend what sex is it's it's not a thing that's going through their minds the older one looks like she might be a little scared like like what's going on 
<laughs> yeah, and, and honestly, the only thing that's really creepy about this one is how old they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's just... Yeah. You know, because there's, there's nothing weird about their pose otherwise. Had these people been smiling, it would have been a perfectly fine picture. Yeah. Yeah, and, and why, can't, why not smile during these pictures? I mean, come on. But when you know the context, it's... It's even yeah. easier. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. man, this next one. Yeah, this next one, apparently her father is, I want to say, what, a Marine? Marine, yeah. Yeah, yeah. a Marine doing this. And and he's got his arms around her waist, and she's, it's almost like she's leaning back into him. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I mean, out of out of all of the, the, the people, you know, in these pictures, this is about the only one that I could have legitimately believed, okay, like, this, this girl probably maybe might have said, Dad, can we do a purity ball? Yeah. Yeah. Because, I don't know, just, just based on her expression, it just, it feels like she's just like, yeah, this was what I wanted, so, whatever. Yeah. It just, just, but it looks a little too, too comfy with your old dad there. I know, that just... This is a weird one, because it's like, he definitely looks like he's gonna kick your ass, but he's a Marine, so he probably would've kicked your ass anyway. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, this this one is oddly creepy on the daughter's behalf. I know. Yeah. And less so on the father. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's just default Marine father and then, oh, father, oh, daddy. No, no, we're not going there. Uh, uh. Speaking of not wanting to go there, the next one. Uh... <laughs> he wants <laughs> to go there. He does want to go there. <laughs> I, like, I shouldn't say that, but... <laughs> The hand placement, and then the way he's got his cheek leaning on her head. Yeah. It looks like he's—he looks like he's about ready to start sniffing her hair. Oh God! Now he's I'm like, picturing oh. that because it's just like such a perfect description for what's about <laughs> to happen in this in the context of this photo. Oh no! I, I, I hope I hope these this wasn't taken in in like uh, Mississippi or Alabama. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh. Oh god. So, so next one, next one. Oh, yeah. And we get into just no. what the hell Where okay. are her hands? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah well I can see one, one of her hands. I can see one of her hands. Uh, yeah, cuz her wait. hand is on top of her father's hand and her other oh, hand okay. is underneath her father's hand. Yeah, it's one of those weird ones that's like I I, I, uh, uh, I mean, I'm sure that can't be very comfortable for her. So it's like he, he put his Arm or uh, over her arm to hold her other hand, which is then on top of his hand. So um, I guess the other question is, where is his other hand? Which I guess they're doing some sort of crisscrossing hand holding thing. So his hand must be the inside hand on the back side of the photo. Like, and this is like way yes. too much analysis for this photo, <laughs> but it's the only way I can get through this. Yeah, that, that has to be the only way to do it. That it has really to does. Be. I feel like her arms just disappear past the shoulder mm. or the elbow. Yeah. Elbow. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh god. Which uh. might actually be the creepiest part of that photo. I mean, aside from they look like they're probably gonna suck out your soul. Yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> uh, insert ginger joke here and, the, and grab your stones on the left. Like creepy people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry guys. I and I don't the like la- to make judgments like that, but... Yeah. And then the last one we've got here is, is just, again, she looks to be too young. She's like maybe 11 at most, mm-hmm. I'm guessing. And then and then what what is her father thinking? And he's looking at her. I don't, I don't know if he's thinking, uh, you know, whether or not he wants to smell her hair or, or, or thinking she's a cheeseburger or something. I don't know. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, too. I was he could, like, he father could very well be stoned. <laughs> going to eat your face. Yeah, and and they're all up in a gallery. They do have some gallery pictures, which, you know, know, it's on the Huffington Post. I'll, I'll, you know, there's the whole thing there. And these are just up there for everybody else to see. That that doesn't necessarily want to go to the Huffington Post. They can go to this place, this gallery, wherever he is. Um, Did he say where he was, where he's from? I I don't think it did, but but, I think they did. but there is a gallery f- with all these. And, yeah, and- so there's there's actually a lot more photos than were shown here. 
Uh, yeah. And I've seen a lot of these, but I haven't I haven't even seen all of them. Yeah. And and there's even one that that has horses in the background apparently. It's mm. like yeah. okay, weird. Oh. Uh, but I, I, one of the things that I have noticed that at least some of them have done and they are some of them are homeschooled. You know, homeschooled kids with their homeschooling fathers or mothers or whatever. Because homes and they bring them home to homeschool because they want to, they want to raise the child with Jesus and all that. And <laughs> well, we have this other one from uh, CrooksAndLiars.com, dot com, and which which ties a little bit into this sort of a thing because of because of the whole attitude of of you know. You know, women should be you know this certain way, and and if mm-hmm. and if something happens, then it's their fault. The whole victim blaming bullshit. Christian homeschool dads get girl kicked out of prom because they can't stop lusting after her. That's right, folks. If you cannot stop, that's right. If you are a man and you cannot stop lusting after that hot piece of ass that walks down the street, then it is her fault for having a hot piece of ass. Yeah. Right, and for wearing clothes that dared to show it off. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's like shit. I mean, it's like shit. If, if, if that were actually true, I well, well, Holly, you'd probably end up being fucked, and not in the good way. <laughs> because, oh. because I have seen, because I have seen, it, I, 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 I see, and I understand. It's like, yeah, but, but it's like it's still it would, I, from what I'm seeing, it's not your fault. You do with what you have to do. But if these guys had their way, it would be your fault. They'd want to wear, they'd want you yeah. to wear a tent. They want all women to wear a tent. For those of you who don't know, I have a pretty epic booty. <laughs> yes, it is. And and you're not the only one I know who has that kind of a problem. So it's it's not like it's not known. And there are other women out there that may have that similar problem. They can't buy jeans or pants or whatever. That doesn't accentuate that. Yeah, and you know, people are like, oh well. You know, it's not a problem because you're an adult. No, I've had this booty since I was a child. I used to get yelled at in ballet class regularly to suck my butt in, to pull my butt in. And it's like, it, this is as far in as it goes, lady. Like, yeah. Just getting, working with what God gave me, man. Yeah. Like, that, that's it. That's, that's all I got right here. Yeah. This is as in as it goes. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. So, yeah. So, uh, with this article, as, as I mentioned, the, the can't stop lusting after the girl. With all the talk of the Christian, quote-unquote, Christian world's incredibly creepy purity balls, but does this article link back to the, the – it doesn't link back to the Huffington Post, but uh, we might look at that if we have time – in which fathers marry their daughters in order to take charge of their hymens, which also produce some why-don't-you-take-a-seat-over-there caliber photo opportunities. So oh, that, like, I'm okay. sorry. I have to interrupt. This is where I saw the video. <laughs> <laughs> If you follow the link, the the incredibly creepy purity ball link, then you'll see the the creepy kissing. Yes. Oh, God. (laughs) So, yeah, it's really not surprising that a bunch of old men at a Christian prom just can't control themselves when confronted with a sweet, sweet booty of a 17-year-old attendee. Sweet, sweet booty. (laughs) Oh. And and they do have pictures of her, and, well, it, it does stick out a bit. Yeah, I mean it's it's a booty. I mean, yeah. I I'd say it's you know pretty standard on a seventeen year old, but yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, and they do have pictures of her. I, I, like I really have no basis for comparison because I had this booty <laughs> my whole life, so <laughs> I don't know what regular seventeen year old booty really looks like. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah. So Hannah Ettinger, Ettinger at Wine and Marble reported that her sister Claire, who was wearing the dress code appropriate clothing to the Richmond homeschool prom... Oh, God. When did homeschoolers get proms? I have to wonder about that. Huh. More and more homeschool kids... Um, because homeschool kids generally still belong to a school district mm-hmm. where they have to follow along in the curriculum, but it's, you know, it's not being taught by the school. It's at their own pace, and, mm-hmm. you know, they can throw in whatever extra stuff. And so oftentimes... Um, homeschool homeschoolers have groups that get together to go on field trips and um, you know have regular school activities and I went to school 
um, with kids who were eventually homeschooled, and they still came to school to do sports and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Cool. Huh. So I, I, I just never heard of a homeschool prom before this, so it was like, huh, okay. It was, it was, it's a new thing. So Claire was excited. She works hard in school. In fact, she's been taking the road less traveled and doing a dual enrollment at the local community college while finishing her high school via homeschooling. According to Ed, Ettinger, yeah, Ett, Ettinger, whatever, she invited Claire to guest post on her blog after seeing the teenager's Facebook post about her experience, which used the appropriate term rape culture activists. Oh, dear. Mm. Yeah. Claire detailed her experiences at length telling the heartbreaking tale of being punished simply for being an attractive female. I got my dress, my shoes, we got our flowers, and we waited eagerly for Saturday to arrive. My dress was gorgeous, silver and sparkly, and I got it at Macy's and it was very ex- and was very excited to find it after searching over six stores for this dress. The only dress code specified on the registration form was that ladies, please keep your dresses fingertip length or longer. This is important. Fingertip length or longer. Like a good little homeschooler, I made sure that the dress was fingertip length on me. I even tried it on with my shoes, just to be sure. It was fingertip length. I was ecstatic, and I okay. laid down several... Now, I have to say, mm-hmm. the the fact that I, I even tried it on with my shoes, just to be sure. Honey, your shoes are below where um, your arms end. So yeah. all you're doing is is increasing the length between the bottom of your dress and the floor, and not actually between yeah. <laughs> the bottom of your dress and the length of your arm. Yeah. Yeah, I read that. It took me a second to process. You, I was just like, "What? Is it? Wait, what?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like, uh, that's yeah, not what the rule Maybe. is about, but okay. <laughs> Maybe public school again? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe? I don't know. But, yeah, so... Where, 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 oh, yeah, she saved up and she bought it. Um, her exciting evening quickly became a nightmare, however. Upon her arrival, Mrs. D, an organizer of the prom, stopped her and told her that her dress was too short. Claire demonstrated that it fit within the fingertip length rule, but that did not please the organizer. Well, make sure it stays pulled down. It too, it's too short, Claire was told. And they have a picture. It is fingertip length. It's not like she's not doing any kind of camera tricks or anything. It's just, you know, she's standing. There you go. They're fingertips. Yeah. Claire is 5'9 and leggy. So she attempted to explain to the woman that things just look short on her because of her physical attributes. I just have long legs. Everything looks short on me, but it is fi- fingertip length. I just showed you. However, she was simply told, okay, but you need to be careful and just keep pulling it down, but not too far. Claire responded, yes, ma'am, though she says she was annoyed with the petty attitude the woman displayed. After she entered, she joined her friends, who were appalled by the treatment Claire had received, and surrounded by girls wearing much shorter dresses than hers, she began to attempt to enjoy herself, but encountered another problem. The dads on the balcony. Apparently, the dads were unable to control their lust for underage girls long enough to act appropriately at a high school dance. Which, I immediately jump in, oh god, they, did, they start a, 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 did they start a group masturbation session right there? Please tell me they didn't. That would just, oh. No. Well, they're uh, probably all just thinking it, though. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, okay, you, you see, you see people, you, you, know, you know, even I sometimes fall into it unintentionally, and then I realize her age, and I'm like, okay, back off. You know, you see somebody you think might be 18, she looks great, and, and you, you, you know, the hormones stir up and everything, and that's fine. But that's still on you, the person yeah. with, who, is, who is lusting after that person. Mm-hmm. That's not on, that's, you know, like, let's, let's, let's take random female, I see her, like, walking through the store or whatever, and I look at her, and she's, she's wearing something that accentuates all her stuff. I, I take a look at her, and I'm like, yeah, I would like to take her home and have all of the sex with her. That's as far as it should go. It should not be, you know, unless unless you can think of a way to strike up a conversation somewhere other than the store, or, or if you just happen to talk while waiting in line or what have you, or if you get lucky in that particular way, that's where it should be left. You know, you don't, it, it's not her, it's not her fault. It's not, you know, anything. It's all natural. You're attracted. Fine. Admit it. Absorb it. Uh, process it, move on. Don't do anything stupid like uh, like these guys are about to be doing. 
<clears throat> we were all so little grossed out by all the dads on the balcony above the dance floor, ogling and talking amongst themselves. We weren't dancing, but swaying with the music and talking and enjoying ourselves. When Mrs. D again approached me and gestured me off the dance floor, she took me into a corner in the hallway with another woman, who I'm assuming was a parent chaperone, and told me that some of the dads who were chaperoning had complained that my dancing was too provocative and that I was going to cause the young men at the prom to think impure thoughts. <laughs> okay, 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 sweetie, sweetie pie, honey. These are young men. These are teenage men. They are at a prom with teenage women. Okay? They're already thinking those thoughts. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Dude, and I know that that's already what's happening. Yeah. In fact, I'm willing to bet that some of the girls were thinking those same impure thoughts. Some it's some about the boys, some about the girls. Prom night. Prom like, night. It's like an American the, tradition or something. Yeah. Traditionally, yeah, you I, go to prom, I, you get laid. I mean, well, I didn't, me... but my prom date was gay. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but yeah, we had my... an awesome time, and every single girl in school was jealous of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. But, yeah, so... <laughs> now he's a drag queen. <laughs> <laughs> nice! Awesome. An award-winning drag queen. Sweet! Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And at this point, I said to her that I hadn't been dancing at all, much less seductively, and that even if I had been being inappropriate, they should issue a warning instead of just kicking me out. She, then she proceeded to reiterate that my dress was too short and I was going to have to leave. Again, I showed her and the lady with her that the dress met dress code standards. The only thing the dress code said was that it had to be fingertip length, and they never had to sign any sort of agreement to abide by that rule in the first place. And second of all, my dress was in compliance with the one rule. Mrs. D said again, the dress is too short, and I asked the chaperone standing next to her what the rule was, and she reiterated that it had to be fingertip length. I showed her my fingers and said, is this tip fingertip length? And she said, yes, but I can't make that call. It's on Mrs. D. A friend vouched that Claire had not been dancing for more than two seconds and that it was entirely appropriate, but was told she wasn't welcome in the conversation because, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to help this slut that we're trying to put in her place even though she's not a slut. As far as we know, and even if she was, it really isn't a big – it should not be a big deal. <clears throat> uh, so, yeah. However, the, in the homeschool world, there's no room for dissent, however correct and warranted. When I protested and asked that she be able to stay to verify what they were saying to me, when they got very rude and said if she didn't leave, they would kick her out too. Then she went and told my date what was going on, and he got very upset and came over and res was respectfully asking them to explain to him the situation. They told him that it was none of his business, and they were kicking me out, and he needed to leave. Wow. Huh. At which point he said, that's fine, she wasn't doing anything wrong, but if you're kicking her out, then the group that she came with is leaving too, and you'll need to refund all of our tickets. And Mrs. D said, no, we will refund Claire's ticket, but nobody else's. And then my date got very angry, but was still being respectful, not raising his voice or anything. And he explained that we all drove together, and if I had to leave, everyone else would be forced to leave with me, and therefore they needed to refund everyone. I want to reiterate that my date was being very respectful, but he was also obviously frustrated with her for refusing to communicate with us in a mature or respectful way. Then she got very rude, repeatedly saying, I will not debate with you about this, when my date was simply asking questions to help him understand the situation, and Mrs. D sent the chaperone to get security, at which point both my date and I respectfully demanded to speak with the lady in charge of prom, and Mrs. D refused to let us. Mrs. D is a bitch. Yeah. And, 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 and why? Why all of this? Because some guys were looking at her and they were uncomfortable. Some or, dads were looking at some her. Some dads were looking at her and said, well, yeah, you know, the way she's dancing, that would totally get my son turned yeah. on. Yeah, your yeah, son. And, right. And, 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 mm, oh, oh mm, no. No, no, that, that, won't, that won't do. I, I feel yeah. strange. I mean, my son feels strange. Right. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm that, that's, that's the story you're going to go with. Okay, sure. So Claire was escorted out of the prom and issued a refund. Her friends, who were promised refunds as well because they were leaving with her as a show of support, were not actually issued the refunds they were promised. Oh, gee. Money not issued to people that were promised. Oh, that sounds familiar. <clears throat> Claire detailed her issues with her experience in the blog post. 
What happened last night was so wrong for so many reasons. I was told the way I dressed and moved my body was causing men to think inappropriately about me, implying that it is my responsibility to control other people's thoughts and drives. Again, to reiterate, it's not her fault. And she did – you know, people, just people in general – we, 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 we are sexual enough beings that we don't need somebody dancing suggestively or doing something suggestive to flick the, oh my god, I want to bang this person switch. You know, We don't always need that. It helps sometimes. Yeah, sure. But if we're attracted to somebody enough, that, that, that switch is going to go off. Some of us more than others, but, but the, so, the switch will go off. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter what, what, what you're dressed at like, what you're, you're doing. It, it's it's a natural thing, and and you know it should be embraced. Obviously, not to the point to where you automatically go up to this woman and say, "Oh my God, you have such a nice rack! I want to rub my face and then." Don't do that. That's what <clears> I do. <laughs> okay, you can do it if you're Holly, but that's because I, yeah. Of... I, I've only a couple of times had a girl turn me down, so <laughs> you know I have a pretty good track record with it. <laughs> okay. Oh, <God. laughs> Okay, you can do it if you're Holly, but only because she's on. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I was talked to disrespectfully, ganged up on, and treated as less than a person by people in authority. And when I requested to have one of my peers present to validate later what was said in this <clears throat> meeting, quote unquote, I was denied the right, and my friends were threatened for sticking up for me. Because that's how that's how oppression works, you know. Uh, you know, and and, and and you know, you you go after the what you perceive as a weak threat or whatever and if people start cha- you know start standing up to you then you start threatening everybody or you pull out some bullshit out of your ass and, and you try and make everybody else out to be the bad guy and you're the good guy you know is it me or am i describing fox news <laughs> uh, uh, just a little bit we were verbally promised a full refund for our group we received only a refund for my ticket they need to refund five more tickets for our group Again, that sounds familiar. Hmm. I felt violated by the sheer number of male parents that were assigned to do nothing for five hours other than watch girls in short dresses and heels dance to upbeat music. I think that it is sick and wrong that they assigned them to sit on a balcony above us and look down on us and single us out for our clothes and dancing. Yeah, I I can think of a good reason why they would be up on that balcony. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, and and to be fair, you know, if the males, if the males, the fathers, if, if they were just there, you know, they're just looking around and like, okay, yeah, you know, you're doing this or what have you, and at the very least, not making a show or 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 having any kind of outward thing about, you know, okay, she looks kind of hot, okay, gotta be careful about that, you know, that sort of thing. I personally wouldn't have much of a problem with it, but. From the sounds of it, these fathers were like just being really, really bad creepers about it, and they somehow got it to where the the everybody in charge blamed this girl, which is you know just fucking wrong. Yeah. So, I mean, again, if you're if you find somebody attractive, fine. If if you're gonna be a creeper about it, then you need to be slapped with a brick. <laughs> That's all there is to it. It's just slap you know, with a brick. That's a yes. new one. Yeah, I, I try to come up with new ones. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I never signed any documentation agreeing to adhere to any dress code, and the dress code that was verbally communicated to me was followed to the letter, and yet I was still kicked out. I was informed by more than one friend who stayed at the prom throughout the course of the evening that there was some truly dirty dancing and that there were several couples making out and grinding on the dance floor, and yet out of a group of 500 people, only one person, her, got thrown out for inappropriate dancing. Yeah, that sounds a lot like my high school. Because <laughs> you, you, get, you get the prom and, you know, hell, my prom... Well, I didn't do a lot of dancing. I was in a different state of mind at that point. No, it wasn't drugs. It was something else. That, that's a lot more sad. But there were people out there grinding and doing the dirty dancing and everything, and nobody nobody really got in trouble for it. Nobody got call, called out or anything. you know. But I wouldn't be surprised if I had been out there trying to do it. I most likely would have gotten in trouble. And that honestly would probably just have been my luck and not anything like this. But I, I can I can also see, like like in previous school dances before, 
in my high school. You know, all these people out there dirty dancing. This one girl gets in trouble for dancing, and she starts, you know, pitching a fit and 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 bitching everybody out about it. Which would be her right because it's like, okay, all these people are doing the dirty dancing, even though it's against the rule. But you single out and take out this one person, and what what's what's the point? I mean, is it because you don't like her? Is it because you want to set an example? I mean, if you want to set an example, then set an example. Don't don't sit there and just single her out and do it quietly. You know? Yeah. I mean, uh. I don't I don't really agree with the idea of setting an example. I think that that's you know an old thing that just needs to just 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 educate people on what not to do and don't single people out and make them like and. You know, and, and humiliate them in front of a crowd, but you know, whatever. Yeah, it's 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 better than if if you make an example for for other people to follow. That's better than just taking them off into private and you know making them feel like shit, and then not doing anything to actually address the problem either. Yeah, because and and, and I tend to agree. I mean, if if I had my way of choosing it, making an example would not be a good thing. Addressing the group as a whole would probably work a lot better. Yes. And say, hey, all you fuckers need to stop doing the grinding and shit. If you want to have sex, go to a hotel room. That's not what the dance floor is for. Yeah, but I respect people a hell of a lot more if, they, if they're they upfront about their bigotry or whatever. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. of course, I don't respect that particular opinion. Right. But, you know, I don't lose as much respect for them if they're like, well, but, you know, it, it's really because of this. And, you know, it's. Mm-hmm. I don't really think like that. Well, no, you do. <laughs> yeah. You know, so if this lady had just said, yeah, your dress is too short and, you know, it, it's making some people feel uncomfortable. That would have been shitty because she followed the rules, but at least it would have been honest. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's just, and you know what? The people who are uncomfortable, she's following the rules. You know, whatever. You know, I'm sorry you feel uncomfortable, but, you know. Maybe you should stop fucking looking at her. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, I mean, it's or or, or well, you maybe say, look, she shouldn't have to wear a burka to to go to prom. You know, exactly. Yeah, maybe maybe she likes feeling you know beautiful and pretty and just and having fun and just all that stuff. But you know, you just decide, no, I'm going to take that away from her because uh, she was making me feel. I mean, she was making my son feel funny. Yeah, and how would she you... might have been making my son feel funny? Yeah. Right. Shooting me? No, 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 not at all. I mean, I, I was definitely feeling funny. No, and, and and yeah, I'm feeling funny. Let me pop this Viagra here real quick. Boom. There we go. Yeah. Uh, just, just, ay, 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 ay. So uh, Claire does have a message for girls in her position, and it's one everyone should hear. I'm going to read it out here. Um, these next two paragraphs here. This is a message to the women who understand that sometimes it doesn't matter how much you pin a dress. You're still going to have cleavage show when you bend over. This is a message to girls built like me who can't find jeans that fit because your ass is just too damn big. The girls with long legs are forced to prove that their dresses fit the dress code just because they have more legs showing than most girls. This is what I want to say. You are beautiful. No matter how you are built, no matter how you chose to dress or dance or what words you chose to say in the heat of the moment. And even more important than knowing that Knowing that the fact that your looks and your body and how you dress doesn't get to define whether or not you're beautiful, you have to know that people are responsible for their own thoughts, desires, and actions. And it doesn't fucking matter if you're just swaying along with the music or if you're grinding up on your date or not even dancing. You are a person with a soul and with potential and with purpose, and the way that other people treat you should never be based on how you dance or dress or talk. You are a person. I am a person. Is it really too much to ask that we be treated like people, talked to as equals, as responsible adults who get to have opinions and likes and dislikes too? How is it that what I look like and how I dress constitutes the level of respect you give me? How is it that you refuse to refund me when I ask for it, but when my mail date asked for it, you agreed to refund my ticket to him? I'm only 17, but I can see there's something wrong about this. Please, please tell me I'm not the only one who would think who think it doesn't matter how people are dressed or how they move about their or how they move their bodies. We should still treat them with respect and decency. And enough with the slut shaming. 
please. God damn, I'm not responsible for some perverted 45-year-old dad lusting after me because I have a sparkly dress on and a big ass for a teenager. And if you think I am, then maybe you're a part of the problem. I'm taking one moment before we go into the second paragraph and saying, A fucking men. Yeah, really. Yeah. Good for her. Yes. And she's right. Unfortunately, this sort of attitude with which she has been confronted is common in quote-unquote Christian school culture, especially amongst the home, <clears throat> excuse me, homeschool crowd. Women and girls are responsible for how those turn around them react. Those, how, those around them react. I read something else weird there. <laughs> They're not really people. There's something less than that. It's somehow their responsibility to control the urges of the men around them. Their responsibility to ensure that they conform to a misguided idea of modesty because for some reason no one is to blame if a teenager is ogled by a group of disgusting old men but the teenager. Ugh. Yeah. That, <laughs> that, that goes all back into – it ties all back into this whole slut-shaming thing. The, the whole Madonna horror complexes and everything else, and and this seventeen-year-old girl has the right idea. She has got the. She's got it. You know, women. You know, no matter how I would look at a woman just walking down the street, she's still a woman. You know, her. She has her own thoughts, her own hopes, her own dreams, and she is a a whole person, regardless of how I think about her in that moment. Whether I think about her just saying, oh, she has a cute shirt on, or, oh my god, I would love to take her home with me. She's still a woman, and, mm -hmm. that, and that's all there is to it. And yeah, people are going to have their sexual urges, and you've got to take responsibility for your own urges. You, yeah. You know, it, it, those are yours. And yeah. I think over the years, that is one of the things that I, I have learned a lot over the years since since realizing okay this is what i really like this is what i enjoy this is who i am that okay yes i, I am a bit of a, of a sex fiend but at the same time i'm not so much of a sex fiend that i look at a woman as anything less than a human i am not entitled to her just because i want to fuck her so yeah. and, and I'm, I'm 31 it took me to get 31 to, to reach it, although I technically reached it a little sooner than that, but but still, it took me a while to reach this point, which I am a bit ashamed to say. I really think I should have reached it sooner, like this girl did. She reached it. She, she's got the, the, the right mentality at 17, yeah, and that's man. a good thing. And and I'm and I'm talking. It sounds like one or both of you want to like say something more about it. I'm gonna I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, but, but the only thing I was I had to say was just it really she she just you know nailed it you know just nailed hit the nail on the head so so well with the um, that it is about how women are expected to con, you know protect themselves and somehow control the urges of men. It's like but men aren't really told to do anything about that. It's just like you know women are to, are told here's how not to get raped. Men are not told don't rape. Yeah. Uh, definitely. And and more men need to be told don't fucking rape. Just don't do it. Apparently more people than we really think need to be told that because uh, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? As long as it keeps coming up and as long as we need to, we'll keep on saying it. Men don't fucking rape. Please. Please, please don't do that. We're, we're we're even we're even saying please. Come on, we're being come on. Serve. <laughs> come on, ah. don't do it. Oh, who's the good boy? Who doesn't make you men? <laughs> who's the good little boy? Who doesn't make women? You are. You are. <laughs> and this is why we have Holly. Yeah. Wow. Yes. <laughs> oh, so on that note, we're gonna have to get out of here for this time. Uh, yeah. So if we wanted, if we wanted to find uh, Mr. Gonzo Link on the uh, social medias, where could we find him? Oh, you can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr uh, at Gonzo Link, the handle, and also, finally, 
uh, has come to light, um, or not not to light, uh, come to fruition. My my new podcast, Focus on the Frames, which I host with Zenith Will Rule. The first episode is up and available at focusontheframespodcast.tumblr.com or uh, on Zenith's uh, YouTube channel, which I believe is Zenith Will Review. Oh, yeah. I, I actually subscribed to them. I saw one or two of those. I need to check that out. Yeah. Good stuff. Yes, and where can we find Miss Holly Christine? You can find me all over various social media as GookyGox, G-O-O-K-Y-G-O-X. You can find my Facebook fan page, Holly Christine Brown, and I'm over at NerdVice. Sweet! And Yay. speaking of NerdVice, that is one of the places you can find me, as well as RTGomer.com. And if you want to find me on the social medias, just check out my Twitter or my Tumblr, both at gomer 21 X. And if you like the shows that I do, if you like this show, the other shows, the videos and everything, and you want to help support for support the shows for better equipment, better web space, etc., things like that there, then head on over to my Patreon page at patreon.com backslash gomer21xx. And if you are watching the video version or even listening to this audio version on iTunes or whatever and like the title card art for this show, among other artworks for my various works, then uh, check out, check out uh, my girlfriend, and I guess she's officially my title card artist now as well, uh, Becky Hopkins, who's got a Patreon page over at patreon.com slash Becky Hop. By the way, guys, I can't repeat it enough and stress it enough. She's an award-winning animator. Pay her enough, she'll animate shit for you. Seriously, go check it out. So um, with that, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine and Gonzo Link signing off. Don't yeah. rape, guys, okay? Don't rape! Don't rape. <laughs> <laughs> Got uh. it. Constructive Deconstruction is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.